All right, folks, it's time to take a trip into the dark souls of Final Fantasy. Well, some people call it that. It's not nearly as hard, and it's probably a disservice to call it a Dark Souls. But hey, it's got similarities. And also, hey, it's a great game. Disclaimer, I have played about five hours into the game. I'm not finished. I hope to finish soon because I'm really enjoying my time. It is roughly 17 hours to completion, according to how long to beat. And this game is a bit of, I, I hesitate to call it a hack and slash. It has similarities. It's an action RPG, which is developed by Team Ninja, a subsidiary of Koai Tecmo. These are the same guys that worked on Hyrule Warriors, so you'll see similarities there. And it is also a tribute to Final Fantasy's 35th anniversary. The game released in 2022 for PlayStation 4, 5, Windows, Xbox One, and Xbox Series X slash S. Uh, just I'll ask you guys first, uh, were you guys aware of this game? Yep. Yep. And I heard it was good from somebody closer to me. Not the general gamer base, but from someone close to me. Yeah, my boy JD wanted me to play this with him, and I bought it on sale, and uh, we just never got to it. Yeah, this is a very interesting game that you can play online together. Uh, the way it works is, like I was saying, it's a prequel to the first Final Fantasy, but in some respects it kind of feels very similar. You know, it's similar terrains, and you go to the king, and he, you know, hands you bits of the crystal, and you're tasked with fighting chaos. And the game is funny, kind of edgy, and kind of like a campy almost with uh, some of the characters. Uh, the main character is Jack. He's got kind of that... Um, delinquent blonde short haircut but kind of like he's kind of got the like the the manly vibes too he's also got airpods that he puts in at one point and he's like at a couple points he's like listening to like hard rock i thought that was funny um and then the other guys are fine uh there's actually a fourth party member uh and basically you do i i had heard you mention this earlier spencer but uh you play as jack and then you have two party members who will go into each mission with you. You can customize them. And what makes the game really stand apart is its combat and its ability to kind of experience the world of Final Fantasy in a new way. This game relies heavily on the class system as well as skill trees and RPG mechanics. So there are basic classes, advanced classes once you master the basic classes, and even expert classes. So far I've only unlocked one advanced class and I've played with a bunch of other basic classes. In addition to this, your characters have main stats, so like your strength, vitality, mana, etc. And every class would have different ratings with them. The advanced classes have higher stats, but of course you have to unlock them. What's really cool is that you can customize different elements of the basic classes or even the advanced classes, etc., uh, including specific skill chains. So the way you attack on the Xbox is you're using a right bumper for quick attacks. A right trigger is a heavy attack. Uh, there's some kind of a block feature, and then you can also uh, hold each button to charge up attacks. And you can uh, assign different skills that you've unlocked on the skill tree to them. So it makes you really, it, this game relies on you being heavily skilled in order to uh, take down enemies as well as some of the bigger enemies. Uh, just another note, there are three difficulties to pick from. If you want to play on baby mode, you play on the story mode so you can experience the story of the game. I'm playing action and I'll tell you the first major boss in one of the missions I had to fight, I just kept dying over and over and I wasn't understanding like what am I doing wrong. Not to say this is Dark Souls S. Dark Souls is much tougher and I think like really punishing. This one is more like, do you understand evasions, chains, blocks, uh, your your light bringer ability, uh, and even just how to play each class. There's like from the start, I think it's like in the first mission, maybe five, six, seven classes. A lot of your standard ones, there's a sword fighter. Uh, so there's regular sword and shield. There's great swords. Uh, there's like a duelist, which is kind of quick attacks. Uh, there's the mage, which has a mace that you use for general attacks to uh, consume or absorb mana, but you can also cast spells. The mage was actually one of my favorites, one of the first ones I really understood how to use. You actually use um, 
for the mace it's right bumper but for the magic attacks it's right trigger and you can use either fyra uh I, I don't know what the other ones are called there's like an air spell a water spell and an earth spell and if you hold it it charges it up so instead of being fire it becomes fyraga or the the full fire attack and so it's and you can even aim it with the cursor it's, it has a very complex combat system and it's so rewarding once you really get the feel of it uh, and I, I just, I've really gotten into it and also playing with the classes. You can also have two classes on one character at any given time. So you can switch on the battlefield. I just figured that out in hour four of the game. <laughs> so there's really just so many things that you're balancing in your head. Also for those special attacks, like let's say you're using the mage and you're using the mana, uh, you, you consume mana on the heavy attacks for any of these builds, for any of these classes, but uh, you you can't rely on them solely. You have to also use regular attacks, and you have to use this like special action break shield. Uh, the way it works too, even for bosses, is they'll have like action break, and or even common enemies. And once you break it, you can do a special attack. Like I think of I, the classic to me, or one of my first, is the Gears of War curb stomp. Once you knock down an enemy, and then you can like come up across them, and you can just press X and then stomp their face off. Jack does basically the same thing, where he's like in hyper mode, and he'll just pick their like some crazy part of the enemy and just destroy them that way so a skeleton he'll tear their skull off and then smash it of their body or uh, like a, like a bat he'll take it he'll tear their wings off and it, it's it's really a spectacle it's almost cinematic it's also a beautiful game the game has this like hdr feature i don't know exactly what it is but my tv couldn't even output it and i have a pretty modern tv so i had to switch to standard mode but even then the game does look really beautiful don't ask me to analyze the plot i can't it's ridiculous it's campy it's corny and it's dumb but it serves a purpose and it's it's it gets you through the game uh, the mission system is cool. At first I thought like, oh, maybe I'd want more adventuring, but I see what they're going for here and I'm fine with it because even within the missions, there is a ton of um, exploration and even treasure seeking uh, to be done. It's really cute too to just see a lot of your favorite Final Fantasy enemies. Like I think of that little hooden cloaked dude with the green reptilian Wonder. skin and he'll uh, stab you to death in like a, an insta kill and even now he's it's still happening but it's rewarding with treasure if you can uh if you can beat him this is like this is a a classic rpg in action rpg and beautiful cinematic 4k uh, hdr uh and i think that's something final fantasy has always thrived with is just being goddamn beautiful for the time and impressive and uh i think this one does it i'm really surprised by how good it is and i hope to finish it soon have you considered playing it multiplayer yeah sure i mean i'm just enjoying on single player but i would play a multiplayer run did you know how it works uh, I imagine, I don't know, I mean, maybe we could look this up, but I imagine that one of the players, like, is it, you can uh, you can start a party when you go into a mission. Mm -hmm. So I imagine that the one of the, like, the other person joins the party. And somebody can let us know in the comments below, you know, if you're checking this video out. Um, but it is something I'd be open to. And I'm sure you just go through the mission that way and you probably share spoils. Mm. Okay. Is the AI decent where your party members can hold their own or do they? Yeah. And actually, if you press left or right, because they represent like one party member, or the other party member, you can call on them to call on me. No, I'm sorry. That you can call on them to do, uh, to like go into hyper mode and show me what you got. Uh, I don't even know these guys' names. Um, something you know and then they'll go into this big mode but they they are pretty competent and you can actually customize their classes somewhat they don't like there's like for your main character there are 30 classes wow total between wow. basic advanced and expert it might be a little bit less maybe it's like 20 to 30 but it's because I, I, I was counting but the basic there's 10 10 basic classes so there's so much your main character can do for a side character it's two but I imagine that those two will lead into advanced classes. So even then you are kind of customizing them, but they are doing their own thing and they are super helpful, especially in some of those boss battles because these bosses, they have huge, huge health bars and I'm sitting there hacking away, evading, blocking, uh, and 
and trying to like, you know, just remember to do anything in the moment. And if I need that bit of respite, they'll kind of distract him for a bit. And, um, you know, I, the other game that I think of, because they did Hyrule Warriors, in Hyrule Warriors, I do not like the AI. I think they're useless. I don't think they do anything that really supports you. But in this one, it really does feel like they're supportive and uh, uh, getting the job done. The thing is, though, like, like what I want, what I'm hoping to see, I just unlocked a white mage class. I don't want to play as a white mage. I'm not here to heal my party members who are AI. So I'm hoping that I can unlock that for one of them so they can heal me. I haven't seen that yet. Where I should probably talk about uh, the difficulty too is, I think Dark Souls works this way where it has like checkpoints as you're going through a stage. Players, if you want to call them checkpoints, yeah, the bonfires are. And you respawn if once you die with a certain number of like potions or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you, your flasks refill. If you're playing Bloodborne, so no. the same if you're playing Dark Souls, yeah. Uh, it's the same concept here. At each of these little crystal swivels, all of your potions will regenerate. You'll start with five. The downside is if you got more, you'll lose them. But it doesn't matter because you you probably won't get that much more anyway. Uh, and all enemies on the field will respawn. Yeah, that's about it. Even ones you had killed. Right. Uh, although what I'm kind of noticing is there really isn't a downside to dying. Uh, oh. It just means you have to get better. Like, I don't know. Because I, I, I kept anything? all my treasure and I kept all my XP. What's that? You don't lose anything? I can't see anything I've lost. I can maintain XP and I can continue leveling up. Maybe on the hardest difficulty that's not the case. I don't know. But uh, the the flip side of it is that it can be hard. <laughs> like... I could be dying in a couple of hits, but you know, the thing is I have five potions to help me regenerate. So, and sometimes more if I'm playing good. Sounds sick. But when you were describing it with the different class branches, like, and then you later said, yeah, it feels like a classic RPG type of game. It's still a little novel to me, imagining that overlaid on an action game, which I'm just not used to that mm. as my interface for those types of customizable yeah. games, but it sounds really good. And uh, that little bit you mentioned where the different classes have different stats, I like that too, because I can't even think of a mainline Final Fantasy game with that, but I know Tactics has that, right? Every time mm -hmm. you're gonna switch classes, you're gonna change like from an archer to a mage, all of your base stats change. Bravely Default did that as well, but uh, yeah, sounds good. And and that's kind of what I was getting at too about like why you need to be kind of proficient with the different classes. It almost gives me like the Dragon Quest Seven flashbacks of like you actually have to be leveling up multiple classes in order to get those advanced classes. But I could not beat that first boss with the mage class as good as I was with it. So I actually had to somewhat teach myself to use a sword class to evade and to block in order to do that. Uh, and the great sword was like super helpful because it's like super powerful. Um, but of course you're a little weaker in terms of your defense uh, and your quickness. So, you know, you have to compensate and just figure out what's the best for each boss right now. I just fought a boss that's super fast on a horse. And so like, I had to figure out like, how do I, you know, what class is best to use against this at this time. Also another cool feature. So the enemies, they'll have different types of attacks. Like they'll have like their special chain attacks or regular attacks, or even these ones that are outlined in purple, which are their specials. So what you can do is if you use the, there's two blocks, there's a standard block, which is left bumper, or there's like, I don't know what they call it, but I'll just call it a magic block for now where you're using your red crystal power to block their attacks and you can absorb their ability that they use and then use it back in them in a finite manner, whatever class you have. And uh, so I, I really like exploring the different classes. Once you max a class out, then you want to kind of avoid it because you like, there's no point to keeping it on because you're not going to keep leveling it up. Uh, unless you want to use it to like for a kind of an easy win on a boss or something. But even then, like, I feel like the, there's enough commonality between certain classes. Like I got three sword classes. Like if I, once I max out great swords, you know, I'm going to do the sword, the regular sword class, or even that duelist one. They also have maces or not maces. I'm sorry. Axes. Uh, I forget what that one's called. Yeah. They have a bare fist one. Uh, so that's the kind of a throwback to, to like Final you know, that kind one of RPG player. Mm hmm. Right. Yeah, exactly. And that's where this game is kind of paying its tributes to. The game is only $40 on regular price. Uh, I did get it on sale for 20 but I think it's worth the 40 
Mm-hmm. Sounds good. I liked when you said that uh, it's not like Dark Souls bosses where they just punish you, but in this game, they want you to know how to dodge, block, and evade. <laughs> Why is it much different? Is it not much different? That's kind of the definition of Dark Souls. No. Yeah. I uh, I liked it. I thought you were bringing it up because it was like a slight against Dark Souls. Well, they kind of, yeah, yeah. Where it's yeah. like, it's like, <laughs> that's kind of what they want you to know too in Dark Souls. <laughs> I guess, yeah, yeah. I, I could see how it would be seen that way. To um, my credit, here the Wikipedia calls it a Souls like. Really? Well, not exactly, but I'll read the the quote, and we'll see where the subscript comes from. Uh, okay, the subscript says this comes from Game Rant. Okay, great. Oh no! Uh, the game, oh boy! A review site critiquing the yeah, game. Yeah, the game combines the job system with Souls-like gameplay. There you go. Oh, come on. It's not that wrong. You said it's, it's dodge, block, and roll. So, there you go. Don't give me game rant. Find a better one. <laughs> I blocked Daddy, them. I blocked them out of my feed. Oh, jeez. Okay, Souls comes up four times. That's the first one. Let's see the next one. Yeah, let's see the next one. The problem is okay, that like, Souls means a lot, I think. And, and it's more than just the combat. It's like the UI even is mm -hmm. kind of souls like now because you're going to have your little flasks. So you're going to have your uh, little number yeah. in the top left corner. But I think like exploration right. is part of it. And part of it is like yeah. risk reward. And that's, that's really like a lot of it is like, do you keep pushing? Do you explore more or do you play it safe? Yeah. And the, the, which the, you can kind of do, but what I think what offsets that in this one is you could just run past common enemies. You don't have to fight them. Well, that's Elden Ring. <laughs> But it's still, okay. it just depends. It's 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 still there though. It's like, I don't know. It, it's it's, I get, and we make a joke of it all the time on the show about, is it a souls, the souls of this genre, or whatever. Right. But, but it's it's, that's a complex <laughs> easy thing. Branding. That, yeah, it's easy branding. It's a complex thing because a lot of people like outside will just be like, is it the souls because it's hard? And it's like there's, there's so much more to it than yeah. that. But yeah, yeah. Yeah. Teddy, anything you, any, you call any of these anything it's going to be a complex topic you know so would how Polygon could you rate the, the game one. um one rating is an action rpg game so kind of its overall rating but then another rating as a final fantasy entry and you know if you think about like final fantasy entries and what would kind of matter for a score you could think of some of the recurring things like summons the games that were kind of between seven and nine, they focused on equipping your characters with little like stat increases. Some of them like between three and five, it's about your classes, even going back to one, you could argue. So a couple of ratings I'm curious about. I'll try and avoid giving it like a number rating. I'll just say like good, as an action good. RPG, it is very numerical in terms of like everything. So if you like that kind of thing, you're going to love this because you can get lost for hours and well, not hours. I mean, it's there's literally a button to optimize your equipment, <laughs> you know, but I mean, it's just fun to go on and make sure, oh, do I have my best equipment? And you can actually see it on your character. That's always a cool thing in an RPG when you can see your armor. I know a lot of old RPGs don't really do that. And it's stupid. Like, they're wearing, like, face masks and stuff. And then it just keeps switching because you're always switching out the best armor. So, I mean, are you going to keep on the things you love? No, you're just going to put the best armor on. But I think that that process is what makes it uh, really kind of deep, in a sense, and fun. It's definitely optimized, right? Like, it's just an efficient system to, to go about it. But I think the trade-off for that is that, like, you don't really develop any attachment for specific armors that you get. And then with the classes too, they're almost disposable because you like, you really get to know and like a class and then you max it out. And then it's like, well, I'm not, I can't stay on this class. So like, like I think, I think you can enjoy it while you're using it, but then you have to be open to using the other ones, which it's fine. They all play similarly because right bumper will always be your fast attack and right trigger will always be your heavy attack and your blocks will be the same. It's just, and then you'll have to customize your, your special attacks. So I think once you understand the concepts, you could play any class and have a good time. Uh, you just have to be ready to play multiple classes. Uh, so if that's 
if you're cool with that, that variety in your main character's gameplay, you'll have a you'll have a good time here. And even just building a party and switching it up. Yeah, I got I think I got three characters to pick from, but you can only have two on the field at any time, which is kind of antithetical to the the classic the four party members, you know, in the, the first Final Fantasy game, which I guess can segue us to rating it as a Final Fantasy game. I think it's good. I think it's really good that, you know, this is not trying to go for anything too complex. It's no, save the kingdom, chaos, it's back, baby. Get those crystals, you know, it's, it's, it's just, all right, let's find the chaos. Okay, Jack. <laughs> like, it's, it's, if you read the reviews for this thing in the Xbox Marketplace, everyone's joking. Chaos is back, baby. Or like, yeah. they're just making dumb jokes about it. So it's kind of cute. Yeah. Um, People seem to really like it, and it's it, it doesn't take itself too seriously, which I think I can appreciate from a Final Fantasy game, and a lot of them seem to. <laughs> Team Ninja, for sure. Cool. Don't be a stranger. Stranger of Paradise. Final Fantasy. Origin? Origin. 